So our next armchair interview, I'd like to introduce Brian Kilcourse, managing partner of RSR Research, who will be interviewing Sanjay Poonin, who is the president and corporate officer of Technology Solutions and Mobile for SAP. And Sanjay has been in the tech industry for over 15 years, and I've heard him speak a few times, and he's a great speaker. So please welcome uh, Brian and Sanjay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, good morning, everybody. How are you? Didn't hear anybody. Let's try this again. How are you? <laughs> yes, I am also good. Uh, how many of you had to fly in last night to San Francisco? It's a show of hands. How many of you are locals? Well, Sanjay and I have the benefit of both being locals. So uh, long commute. Long commuters. Yeah. So anyway, uh, we're glad to have this conversation, Sanjay. Thank you for joining me on Brian, this conversation. Pleasure. Thank today. you. Well, one of the things I was struck by, and, and this is something that, that, that challenges our research all the time, is people talk about mobile this, mobile that, mobile the other thing. And here we are talking about mobile commerce. Um, in, in your view, what, what are the perimeters of mobile commerce? What does it entail? Social, payments, selling, uh, informational, community, all these kinds of things. Talk to me a little bit about your, your view of social. You know, it's uh, excuse me, mobile. mobile yes. I think if you look at, I was actually looking this up on Wikipedia um, last night. The term mobile commerce was actually defined in 1997, uh, and defined, you know, and well before the advent of the iPhone and the explosion of, of phones, to be any delivery of electronic goods and services with wireless as an endpoint of that. And that's, I think, a fairly good characterization. You can almost go off into Wikipedia as a pretty good definition of this, and I think the reason it's become extremely relevant right now is all of what you described certainly is encompassed under that envelope. Uh, in the mid-90s, uh, people were really focused on e-commerce, and e-commerce is fairly well solved. People were worried about putting credit card information in an e-commerce system. People today are very comfortable leaving their credit card system in a, credit cards in, in, you know, in a secure place like Amazon. And much of that world now um, is moving to mobile. I think the other stat that's very interesting is uh, if you looked at 2009 or 2010, about 3% of e-commerce transactions were done in mobile. This is just around the time that the iPhone and iPads are starting again. And that number has crept up to 10 or 11% last year, with estimates you know, saying that this will go from you know, 30, 20, 30 billion to some say even trillion, if you look at the latest Juniper research. So, you know, in many parts of the world, today mobile is the way in which people are getting to the internet. Um, I grew up in India. Today there's more people accessing the internet um, across a mobile device in India than over a laptop. So the age is ripe, and I think many of the things that we saw solved in the e-commerce world 15, 20 years as the Ebays of the world and, and Amazons of the world became household names, are, starting, are going to start getting solved in uh, you know, the next few years. It's a very exciting time. So let's talk about triggers. Um, my company studies retail. We speak of retail rather broadly. We speak about the world, but view the, through the, the lens of a retail executive, um, as interesting as that might be to you or not. But um, one of the things that we think about is, is fundamental changes in consumer behavior that technologies char uh, ch uh, cause. So for example, one of the things that we talk about is a huge paradigm shift in retail, an, an overused phrase obviously, but, but uh, pertinent in this conversation, with the advent of barcode scanning at store level. Something big happened, uh, changed behaviors. Certainly it was the opportunity for companies such as Walmart to optimize their supply chains and to grow to sizes that people hadn't thought about. It's been argued, and by us, so among other people, that mobile is that next trigger mechanism, that it caused fundamental changes in consumer behaviors. And one of the things that we say is that the consumer no longer has to go to the store to do his or her shopping. The store is now in his pocket or her purse. Fundamentally different behavior. What's your view of when that really started to take hold, and what are the implications of it to you, to the consumer? I think you, know, you, you characterize it well. Uh, in essence, e-commerce was about bringing the store to your laptop, and mobile commerce is about bringing that store to your pocket. Right. Um, and I think, you know, John Doerr, I think, put it pretty well when he talked about the so, mo, lo, uh, social, mobile, and local being the three phenomena that are coming together. Uh, and they're all very intertwined. 
And they're also intertwined with other big forces that are at play, like big data and analytics, uh, which the retailers are just, you know, they've always had a good science around, but the notion of how you do big data today uh, in both its velocity and its variety and volume encompasses social data too. So you look at a couple of those. I mean, if you aren't today uh, with a comprehensive view in your mobile or your e-commerce strategy of capturing social information, you're losing out on a very, very important avenue. We had one of our uh, consumer goods company that told us that they were finding out that their customers were interested in Greek yogurt, not by looking at historical sales, but by looking at Facebook and Twitter feeds to understand that women or mothers or so on and so forth had an interest in that type of yogurt. You get some really good forward indicators, not just of customer service, but also forward indicators of sales from social media. Um, the aspect of how you take location and local into the way in which you do mobile strategies is very much one because the, the computer, if you think about it, um, for decades a computer was you know, pretty much a dumb device. It didn't know where you were, it didn't have a camera, but from its inception practically smartphones have a camera on them, they're location aware, and there's a lot more you can do for the consumer with this thing that's actually got as much compute power on it as the first spacecraft in 1970. So when you put those together, the retailer now has tremendous amount of, of um, availability to have those consumers bring to them a lot of their preferences, do what's called precision marketing, precision retailing, and that's now become a well-known science, um, and do it to the, to, the, to the extent that the consumer is comfortable. I think the more that I can get, uh, couponing has been something that everyone's done for a long, long time in the context of paper, whether it's you know, my wife going to Safeway to do that, Mobile couponing, we're watching very carefully and, and strategically how that's going to be used for groceries, um, to mer mass merchandise items, to clothing. Um, and to the extent that there's a one-to-one -one relationship that's always been, I think, the, 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 the goal of every retailer, consumer goods company, or for that matter, even banks, uh, that you can be facilitated that makes my relationship with the retailer more strategic, a la what you've seen in Amazon in the recommendation engine and so on. Uh, I think you have a huge opportunity to take this big data analytical mind and uh, get closer to the, cu to the customer's mobile. So there's, I learned something. I learned that I can blame my iPhone for the fact that my refrigerator is full of Greek yogurt. And um, I didn't even know where that came from, but um, it showed up. Okay, so but let's talk a little bit about the consumer and this big data notion. Because yeah. one of the things you said was this notion of, of sales that were attributable to the mobile channel. Retailers have been, uh, I would say, close to the point of panic about this notion of being disintermediated by companies such as Amazon and the Pure Plays. And yet, uh, more recent data suggests that consumers are using their mobile device, uh, if you will, for the early shopping behaviors, the investigative, Client sometimes yeah. the selecting, yeah. then they go to the store for the social experience, or the fulfillment experience. And, and, and this raises a big question. This, this raises a, a question of, where do the sales get at, attributed to? And, and Wall Street seems to be stuck in the same store sales notion. They seem to be stuck there where they'll say, well, so much of this can be attributed to the to e-commerce the e channel, some can be to the mobile, some to the store, some to the fulfillment center, but in fact, they all work together perhaps to solve a single transaction. Is this the essence of big data, is, is following that path to purchase so you can understand how the customer is actually interacting with you? I think the, uh, you make a good point. We were talking a little about this in the green room. I think the companies that can strategically think of big data as the new oil of the economy. I mean, we as a company, SAP, we were responsible for, you could describe the resource planning of the old economy, industrial right. um, automation. Uh, and the R in ERP stands for resource. But the new oil is gonna be big data and analytics. And the companies that mine that it's the perfect equalizer. So you have an opportunity. You don't have to be an Amazon. If you've really got a way by which you've understood the ways in which you can mine and effectively use that. Um, today, there's been a lot of focus on multi-channel being the, the combination of um, bricks and mortar coming together with stores and understanding how you have a perfect blend between them. But even you know, when I do a mobile lookup of a product, it's usually telling me sort of some refresh of what's available on their e-commerce site. Right. Uh, if you can actually bridge, for example, being able to go into a physical store, because stores, I mean, they're, they're declining, but they're not gonna go away, and provide for me an experience in the store that allows me to connect directly with the products that are there, 
have the uh, store associate um, or the sales representative have intelligence about me, just like my Nordstrom shopper, um, based on preferences that I've allowed them to, to, to think. I mean, you, you have a much more engaging experience with the customer. This is possible in the store. So the same way that you were thinking about recommendations showing up on a website, you now have a much more smarter, intelligent store. And with the innovations that are coming in um, smart location, aware things, we're working with Cisco at ways in which you can actually guide people right. to the physical aisle of a store, and whether it's NFC or other ways in which you can actually uh, get information directly on the product. I think that, that the combination of where the website to the mobile store to a physical store gets to, the companies that can actually make that seamless, that's a grand equalizer. You could do this whether you're an Amazon. Amazon's never going to do a physical store, or at least as far as we know, and um, uh, any other place. And the whole thing becomes about what really, if you go back to the one-on-one -on -one retailing, it's about customer engagement. So this is fascinating. We have a couple of other things. And mobile isn't just great for the consumer. Mobile is also leaving little breadcrumbs to help those who are serving the consumer understand how they get to the brand. And they can now measure whether or not they're doing the good job or the bad job to bring that brand value to that consumer. It's a treasure trove. I mean, listen, at the end of the day, everyone's worried in this era of the last few weeks about surveillance and privacy. Mm -hmm. So I acknowledge that. And you have to always know that the customer is king. Uh, their information, if they don't want to share it with you or want to opt out of information, they can. But if I know, for example, that the, the, my refrigerator is low on milk, and I was from, you know, walking by a store, and it told me that the milk I like is available at this store, in this aisle, and the yogurt I also like um, is also available right next to it, and there's a promotion to buy it there, that's an experience that I'd probably be okay with. Um, and you know, the future of that is the wonderful world of machine to machine, where my car tells me it, the air pressure is low, or I've got to fill gas. The thing. So I think the notion of the way in which we get to a smarter connected home, um, retail being smart and connected, your refrigerator, your car, your thermostat, all of that being in a place where you decide how much information and how much you want it to be able to get to you, but the customer then is in control of that information. We are there. This is not a back to the future movie. This is happening as we speak. And we call that world the world of the Internet of Things. Um, the retailers have to and must and are starting to participate in that wonderful opportunity. Fascinating. Let's talk a little bit about SAP. One of the things I, I thought was interesting, it was two years ago, I believe, uh, Jim Havam and Snave talked about the Sybase acquisition, and he talked fairly eloquently about the fact that SAP, which was never known for being real friendly on the user interface side, was going to make mobile the first screen. This is a profound statement. And uh, the, of course, like many people in the audience, I thought, boy, that's a tough one. So You love our user experience, don't you? <laughs> I love the user experience. That, was, that was, was supposed to be a joke. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, well, we're just going to leave that one alone is what we're going to do. Um, <laughs> But instead, we have what, some agreeing people in the audience. I know, I know. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what is SAP doing? Yeah. You're making strong, bold moves in the mobile direction. Talk to me a little bit about what. Yeah, you're up you know, to. I think for us, we realize we're 200,000 customers. We're the largest in business software. 60% of the world's GDP runs through our system. We call those systems of record: financials, HR, lots of the retailers. Many of you, if your customers are, are SAP customers, we realize that those systems of record, we're going to have their day. But systems of engagement, which was getting information out of those systems of record and analyzing them, the whole world of what we call big data and analytics, was going to be just as important. So we began six, seven years ago in investing in analytics. We acquired a couple of companies, the biggest of which was business objects. And today, we're the leader in, in analytics. And big data and analytics for us has become a huge part of that new oil of the economy. And for us in 2010, we began to see, with the advent of the iPad, a huge opportunity to mobilize our own sales force. It really was an internal revelation for us. And we said, listen, if we can mobilize our sales force where we destroy spreadsheets and we have them run their forecast, their pipeline, all on an iPad, why can't we do this for customers? So Sybase brought us some of the leading enterprise mobile assets, and we've invested significantly since then, done a couple of other acquisitions. And today, we have some um, a, a broad investments in mobile security, so that just like your laptop was secure from viruses, you have now confidence that your 
uh, iPads or phones uh, can be secure, and that's not going to be just your devices. It's going to be your refrigerator of the future being secure. We think mobile security is going to be a huge opportunity in this world of cybersecurity. And then a platform by which you can snap together, just like Lego building blocks, B to E, business to employee, or business to consumer apps. And that's where much of this retail and mobile commerce part has comes in. And then the third category are packaged apps that we, in a second I'm going to show you some of these, uh, which actually give you a sense of how you can do things as a retailer or a banking customer or a consumer goods company. Uh, at this overall enterprise mobile area, we're now the leader in that segment. But it's part of our grand vision at SAP to augment these systems of record with systems of engagement. And we think systems of engagement, things like analytics and mobile, are going to be just as important a category uh, for our customers. And it represents where you folks are headed, social, mobile, analytics, so on and so forth. So you said you have something to show me. Is that what that is? All right, should we do that now? Let's take a look at it. All yeah. right, okay. So what I thought, you know, I, um, I find today that the best way to dialogue is no longer with PowerPoint, but to do this, uh, if we can get the iPad up, uh, with the combination of a whiteboard and um, um, you know, a discussion of what we're doing. Do okay. uh, so you see it up there? Okay, good. So um, I want to just show you couple, very quickly the type of experience you might have as a retailer in two or three different scenarios very quickly. First, I'm going to imagine, if you would, that you're going to uh, you know, a Home Depot or a Lowe's or some company that actually designed your own room. And let's think through the experience of how we can make this. This is a mobile app where you design your room. You could pick a design from a living room that's offered to you or a bedroom. But let's actually design your own room. And this is where a couple of companies are starting to do this. You can, with a phone or an iPad, you have a camera. So let's take a picture of your room. So imagine that this is my room. And um, I want to you know, uh, pick certain paint colors for the room based on what's available in inventory. So this is coming right off the catalog. And you can tell I'm very good at room design here. So I'm going to pick uh, outrageous colors. This is why I don't do room design this is obviously in my home. Your, this is your kids' This room, is my wife room. doing it. This is my kids' or me doing it. Okay. And then we could also pick product right from the room. Let's pick a bed there, move it down, rotate this a little bit. Okay. Uh, we're going to put maybe a coffee table and uh, put that there. Okay. Uh, bring a TV. Okay. My wife doesn't want me to watch the TV, so we're going to turn this around. <laughs> okay, it's facing the wall. So you get the idea. I mean, it's not, it's crude, but you can perfect this. This is the internet. You can immediately uh, hit the checkout and this is now sent to you. Or this could be the actual app in the hands of the store account executive or sales clerk uh, at the store you go to. Okay, so now take it a step further. And I'm gonna, you could go on and on doing this as much as you like. But what I'm going to do now is imagine, if you would, that uh, this box is shipped to you with the actual contents of that dining table. Oh, that, sorry, that coffee table. And we're going to scan off the, di the, the QR code on the box okay. uh, the instructions to put that coffee table together as a consumer. So, so throw away the 20 page required. manual from IKEA. You've got now the instructions of how to do this like a movie. And when we've tested out this type of you know, instruction set, it's less error prone, it's less likely to have returns to it. Um, and you have now the entire instruction set. So we bought a company that has 3D visualization very well. And we could snap together this inside a mobile app. Okay. So this is the example of how you engage B2E or B2B or B2C with one type of customer. Let me give you another example, but it takes the same concept to in, a, in, a, in, a, in a similar type of direction. You're not now designing a room, but you're, you're buying clothes. So this could be your Nordstrom. Uh, and I've done, done this where this is a live picture. Uh, and it's sort of actually built to be connected to my, so if you can see that no, I'm I moving around, it's right. cool. Okay. Uh, but once you go inside, um, uh, you know, the actual store, um, you can um, fit yourself out. What would you like, Brian? Maybe some crazy pink trousers? Uh, uh, you know? It's my style, it's my is, style. You're getting ready for Las Vegas here, okay? I got it. I, this is, right. is this after my exercise program? This is, this, you look good in this, okay? <laughs> so we check out, we do the same thing. But that same idea of gamification, I took the room concept out and I put a person in place. And you get the idea. You're now engaging with the person. And we've taken this now even to the level where um, you could design this for a consumer, where this is now a consumer app, guys. We've got this downloaded on the, on, you can all download this on, this is a phone. And I'm going to simulate a phone now on an iPad, blow it up here. You've got all the various different brands that you might want. It's a consumer app that's sort of like Pinterest but for a customer who would want to just pick from the various different brands what they would want um, and perhaps uh, pick what's f fashionable at this point in time, trends, mm -hmm. 
particular promotion. So let's actually go here, and I tend to like watches. So, you know, let's pick off this uh, particular watch that uh, uh, I'm going to favorite. Uh, and as I do that, you'll nice find... Nice choice, nice choice. Okay, okay. it looks good there, huh? Yeah. And you'll yeah. see on the, uh, the wish list, if you would, uh, that now has been added to my list of wish lists. And when a promotion shows up, uh, I might get a particular set of promotions. These are the promotions that are available here. Uh, okay. And you notice even at sort of the opening screen, you might have various different promotion places that are um, you know, available. So this idea of the more and more that you can connect with a consumer uh, takes this to a whole new level. And I'll show you one final thing um, that we've been, uh, this is now in a, diff a third scenario, which has to do with vending. So you, we, we talked about furniture, we talked about um, clothing, but we think the vending machine of the future too could also be uh, completely uh, re-innovated. So we think about how you can build your own profile. Um, so imagine now you go to the, the, to the vending machine for the first time, and the first time you go in there with your phone, you pick the color that you want um, you know, for the, the, the relationship that you have, the appropriate ways in which you want to engage, uh, and then when you're done, now you pick uh, you know, particular products that you want. So maybe you, you want a Coca-Cola, um, and um, you, know, you want a Sprite, perhaps. And then it remembers you, and the next time you come in on your phone, you tap, maybe with NFC or so on, and you get promotions. Or you could order from a vending machine directly on your phone. So whether it's furniture uh, for your home or an office, whether it's clothing, or whether it's soft drinks, all of these, and this is, by the way, a smart vending machine, an intelligent vending machine that has um, sort of a mini computer on it. The world, Brian, I think is going to be fantastic in terms of its possibilities. I just thought to show the audience here some of the types of flavors yeah. of how mobile, combined with that big, ta big data treasure trove, is a huge opportunity for every one of you. And that's what we're trying to do as a company. Very exciting stuff. And there's so much that we haven't chatted about. We so can we're get gonna, back we're off my to... iPad so people don't see all my personal yeah, folders. We're going to have right. to do this okay. again, obviously. We'll great. find out what that Levi's button was. You know, talk about this. Never mind. We're not going to do that. But we didn't talk about employee enablement. We didn't yeah. talk about uh, uh, in-aisle empowerment of the consumer. Yeah. We didn't talk about next generation payments. There's so much that we could talk about. But uh, we have exactly one minute and 30 seconds left. So. Give me some last thoughts. What's next? What's going to happen next? Well, I mean, I would probably ask for those of you who've known SAP, I bet that's not your grandmother's SAP, okay, yeah. in terms of what you're seeing of us. We, it is, I think, to what you quoted Jim as saying, it is transforming not just our user experience. That's just the tactical part of it. It's bringing us into a whole new set of conversations that are consumer-focused. Our goal is to try and touch a billion consumers, a billion users. It could be consumers, it could be employees. And we think there's a fraction of 7 billion people in the world who are ripe candidates for either enterprise solutions that they will want on their mobile device, that's employees of a company, that's B to E, or better still, consumers where some part of a solution could sit inside a retailer or a consumer goods company and have it then serve out to a consumer. We're very, very excited about that world. And I think it's going to get even more exciting as you think about the Internet of Things. So we're just, I think the next five years, uh, for any of you who are just entering the workforce, if you're young in your 20s, it's going to be one of the most exciting times in IT. We sadly are going to have to leave it, and there's so much more that I would like to chat with you about. We're going to have to do it offline. We'll do it another or they're time, going to have Brian. to invite us back for another time. Okay, thank you, Brian. But thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. Okay. Appreciate right. that. Okay. Well done. Well done.